Hello, Schmoob Tube. I really wanted to animate my dreams, but I'd be pumping out dreams on the daily, and I can't really keep up with them, honestly. I haven't even been prioritizing that over my music video animations or uh, my game I have in the works. That's, that's at the bottom of the barrel of the three. So I decided to maybe just read some off. Start with today's dream of April 19, 2024. I was at some crowded ass party. When I first arrived, I saw Karina, someone I knew from high school. She was selling drugs and asked if I wanted to buy. I declined and actually tried to sell her what was left of my stash since I quit. It was so crowded that nobody could move, except for me pretty much. The crowd was giving me like a four foot radius around me, acting like I had the plague or something. I sat on the white couch, next to me laid Sean Helmke. I threw some needles into the crowd, and when they hit people, they would instantly vanish without a sound or anything. I simply wanted to thin out the room a bit so people could walk and move. Sean started being goofy and I started to talk to him. I woke up to a sleep paralysis demon, taking the shape of my half-opened closet. His head was shaped like a T and his body was square. I asked him if he was okay because I didn't want to be hostile. I asked it kind of jokingly though, like, you good bro? The demon faded into the closet and I drifted back to sleep. My sister came in through the front door and a friend was with her. They were chatting about something, I don't know what. I just hoped that it wouldn't come into my room because I was sleeping shirtless. Dad and Devin wanted to go somewhere to eat for breakfast. I, however, did not. I was in my pajama bottoms and shirtless, not really wanting to get dressed. However, I mindlessly followed them to the car and got in the front seat and rode with them all the way into town. I realized as we pulled up to town, I never wanted to go in the first place. I had accidentally just rode with them because I was listening to their conversation the whole time. They were talking about pre-gaming breakfast and discussing who would be the driver. I told them I didn't want to go and I would take the car home and come back for them. They both were happy about this plan and got out as I scooched over as to not expose my shirtless self to the public. I pulled out into a neighboring parking lot and while I was coming up on a turn, I hit the brakes to slow. The brakes were really stiff and I mashed it hard, but the car didn't slow down like pretty much at all. I slowly rolled past the first exit to the parking lot and was like, oh damn. <laughs> Coming up to the second and last exit, I needed to stop here because the parking lot had an outside marketplace with stalls selling clothing and jewelry and knickknacks. However, once again, after mashing the shit out of the brakes, it didn't stop. I rolled into the middle of the marketplace and I parked the car and got out. A guy working there was like, really dude? I said to him, hey man, this isn't my car. It handles like shit. I get into an argument with the staff and I didn't realize at what point the marketplace turns into a building. We were on the second floor and I could see the street below from the windows. The car was still parked right beside me on the second floor. After the logical argument where no one was really mad or we just trying to rationalize things, I realized the setting changed and I put my hands up and I yelled at the ceiling, how did I end up on the second floor in a building? I leave the Prius and I start to run through an empty back rooms like hall. There I saw a woman. I thought she wanted to fight me and I wanted to fight her. As she ran at me, I declined this offer and smashed through a glass window of the second floor holding my hands out like a leap of faith. I dispersed into the darkness of a void that appeared suddenly from the bright sunny building exterior. All right, well that's that. I think I'm gonna read off some more, you know, uh, I have such a stockpile, you know, I, I kind of just got to get rid of them. Got to get them, got to get them posted and up there, you know. I was at some camp place and like a big group of people. We were gathered up and getting ready to walk somewhere. We started walking and as we did, the group would get smaller. I asked to use the bathroom and was denied. This kind of pissed me off. The group shrunk to about four plus the instructor. He said we were about to time travel. We went through some doors and it did feel like we time traveled. Everything went old timey, including the people. We were in a town. The group was into it, as was I. We had only walked in basically a straight line up until then. However, the guide started zooming, picking random doors and the group chased after him as to not lose him. We were being sent further back in time, making it to what looked like pre-depression era and the world was going black and white and staticky. I yelled at them to stop. 
I believe the guy to be trying to get us lost in time on purpose. I was third in line. I think Gunner was behind me, my cousin, and maybe Devin in front of me. Ava was first in line, behind the guide. I managed to snap only Gunner out of this trance-like state of running through time. With this, Gunner dangled back a bit and I tried to get Devin's attention, but she was too focused on keeping up. Gunner got sick of this and screamed a high-pitched scream that warped space in a weird way. When you look at him, it was like my vision locked on. I woke up next to Devin and Gunner in a theater. We stood up with the crowd and began to leave. Right away, we noticed no Ava, and we began to plot saving her. When we left the theater, I still needed to pee badly, so I started heading towards a bathroom, but Devin and Gunner took off through the side exit. It kind of pissed me off, again. They wouldn't wait. I decided to see if there was a bathroom right next to the exit they used. And there was, but it was like another hallway through a door. It was really strange, like a hallway just next to a hallway in a theater. Like not even perpendicular, they were just parallel hallways. Anyways, however, there were only two bathrooms labeled women's and less women's, both with stick figures with a skirt. I wondered if I was allowed in either and just said fuck it. Not like any regular woman would be in a less woman's bathroom. I stepped forward and it was like a cop spawned and started questioning me. I, s <laughs> I spawned a dress or something and claimed to be trans to get in. The cop was sus because the woman voice I used sounded like I was making fun of women, which I really was, but he decided to leave and <laughs> but he decided to leave me alone and even mocked my voice as well. I stepped into the bathroom in my little dress and inside was a bunch of regular women. I said to them in a slightly exaggerated and manly voice to be funny. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. None of them laughed. I sat quietly in a small stall, which I could see over. A woman stepped in front of the closed stall door <laughs> and a staring contest commenced between us. I wake up in bed, kind of groggy and slow-minded. Ava came to my door with some device. She said that Gabriel Devon's ex had saved her from the past and she had fallen in love with him and wanted me to deliver a message that she was saved on his device to him. I was at the condo pool. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? I was in a cafeteria doing this clunker crouch jump sprint around the place, but it was a bit more strange. Instead of a crouch jump, it was like a butt scoot, and I would pop up and down just on my butt. It felt to me like the ground would give way a little bit, and I would be thrusted into whatever direction I thought I would go. I went around at high speeds, and I think I was fucking with people just a little, but I'm not too sure. I entered my old bedroom, and there was a bunch of kids playing in it. I think my cousin Morgan's kids, plus my nephew Nico. I lay down on the bunk bed, which was inside the closet, I went to sleep fairly easily, even though the kids were playing. I think as my sleepiness grew, their noise died down. I was in the game room and the white sets were gone. They were replaced with these chairs along the wall. Like a single furniture item of multiple linked chairs, like a doctor's office. In the middle, there's this weird gap with a regular chair. I chose to sit there. This glitchy ass hairless dog starts acting up and attacking. People were sat in their chairs and watching as the dog started to attack. I didn't really know what was going on, but pulled out, I think, a bolt-action rifle with just an iron sight. I tried shooting the dog, but it never worked. It was like I shot a bullet, but the bullet just did nothing. The dog glitched about and killed me somehow. I only remember it biting my arm once in a glitchy, funny fashion. It glitched up to my arm without standing. It was just floating. The people laughed as I died, and I laughed too. It kind of had a game-like feel to it. I respawned outside of the game room and entered again. I asked why the dog kept attacking me. An adult woman said that if you sit in the chair that you sat in, you claim the identity of Aiden, who is destined to fight the dog. I realized I was Aiden, but didn't mind if someone else took my name for a spin, which IRL I wouldn't be so cool with. There was a girl sat up on a pool table. We started applauding her. She had been promoted or something and was, I think, like a new leader of us in some kind of way. I went and sat next to her and asked a few questions. I don't remember how important they were, but I think they were about policy or something. I feel like I thought of this girl as a girlfriend, but never touched her or acted like she was. Nearing the end, I spit out the floss 
Nearing the end, I spit out the floss. That was it. Nearing the end, I spit out the floss that was in my mouth the entire time. Like a whole floss pick. And I held it in my hand to the girl's mouth. I told her to spit hers out so I could hide it. So that people wouldn't steal her, steal the memory in her DNA. As we walked out, she spit the second crumbled up floss pick in my hand. She like chewed the whole thing up. It was like a little ball of grossness. I take the two crumbled up toothpicks, toothpick flosses, and fly out to the field. The grass line where it was cut was much more prominent than in real life. The tall grass was taller and, the, and denser, like lush carpet grass. It was also very even and formed pretty lumps rather than frayed dust bunnies of green hair. I flew well past that area that I was familiar with and found myself in a spot I knew nothing of. The trees and foliage matched that of my backyard, but in its natural state, uncut and rampant. I started to wake up and so I decided to stand still so I wouldn't wake up and just take in the beauty. When I did, the dream's visuals magnified and became very beautiful. A song began to play and I began to cry. And, oh jeez, I, I tried to recreate the lyrics here. Uh, I don't remember the beat. Let me just try and remember the... Uh, I don't remember. It's only a single line. I can't get anything off of this. It just says, stones aren't meant or made by man. And then it, below that it says, uh, I was way too overtaken by emotion to listen to the lyrics. I cried and I think, thank God in my mind. The scene changed once or twice, but it always felt like home. I remember the first scene in particular. It was just a few trees on the other side of some fence line and some decent length grass on my side of the fence. The trees looked like mesquite and weren't well kept, short branches and vines clinging to their trunks, but it was very beautiful. I end up in my old room, except it's like massive. I was on a laptop and got some chocolate on the screen. Tegan comes in and asks what I was doing. I told her I was looking for a song from my last dream and told her the lyrics. She thought they were goofy, which they were. I tell her the lyrics, stones aren't meant for, meant or made by man. We chatted about I don't know what while I tried to use Google, but was really confused and lost. Eventually I got it. I searched it up and there was nothing. Tegan took the reins and after that, I think she put on Just Dance. And I remember doing some goofy ass dance, but <laughs> after this, I left and roamed some liminal space ass back rooms, hallways, just white hallways with carpet and lots of turns, well lit with windows. It felt like mid morning outside, you know, like light shining in. And I put a little disclaimer at the end that um, me and Tegan playing Just Dance, I put it after the beautiful scenery dream because that only makes sense, but but I also feel like it took place after the cafeteria dream. So there's some weird time stuff going on. Let's see where I am in this recording. God damn, that's a lot of time. What do y'all think? Do y'all think I should do dream airport troubles with granny? <laughs> what about dream massacre at Lake My House? Nah, I'm just gonna click a random one without a title. I don't title these anymore. There's just too many to title. <laughs> This dream, so when I make dreams, I'll like put a small gist of it and then I'll like go back to sleep and then when I wake up for real, I'll write it down. And this time I put like the small gist and I didn't come back and write it down. And this is all it says. The title is just dreams and it's got three lines. Dolly, terrible, gruesome, Emerson, Taryn. Devin's shitty birthday. <laughs> Driving gas-powered car battery, which I imagine I meant battery-powered car. Lunch cuck suck shiv kill, what? Poop throwing child. <laughs> Gotta find a good one. Cool, I'm gonna do this one. Oh gosh, it's long. I don't know if it's any longer than other ones I've already read, so. Sometimes when I write these, I'm half asleep and it just doesn't make sense. I was falling into and out of consciousness at my desk while Blender was going. I was extremely weak and tired to the point my vision was going out. I slowly became slightly more sentient, just enough to get the thought out. I thought I went to sleep already. What I meant by this was I wrapped up the whole day of rendering, the day before, and had gone to bed. That was also the peak of my sentience as I decided to go back to sleep in the chair. That, that was not real, I was sleeping in bed at this point. I was in a weird blender model place. Everything was different shades of gray, like in the blender default shading view. I was a little sphere along with many other little spheres with gamer tags. 
We were kind of self-organizing and making lines filling into different areas based just off of where we wanted to be. I was trying to I was trying to make it into this cog thing with little chambers that looked like it would take me far. I was in the area before that where you would jump into these rings that would grab you and hold you floating in air until the next person jumped to the next ring so you could jump from ring to ring freely. I'm gonna have to like draw this or something. <laughs> I got into a really long line of balls <laughs> and decided I didn't want to wait. So I took off my headset and and I had a little paragraph cut here, like a little suspense building up. And I was in some VR arcade place. It was cool, although kind of gross. It was like Chuck E. Cheese's with like VR headsets. You can only imagine how terrible that would be. They had these seats that had VRs attached and you could pull them over your head. It looked kind of shoddy. But the VRs were small and the suspensions on the chair made it not so heavy on your head. I found a little elevated platform with quite a few of these machines. They were elsewhere as well, like all around the building. But I decided to go there because a few guys there looked pretty cool. I was shirtless and sat down on an uncomfortable chair. An uncomfortable Chuck E. Cheese stained ass greasy chair. I didn't write that, but I, I still have emotions pertaining to this dream. I rested my back on the- oh, I, I, I addressed this point. I didn't need to go on a little tangent. I rested my back on the machinery for just a second, but took it off as the machinery, machinery was warm and wet as if a big sweaty man had just got off it. I sat straight up, kind of grossed out, hoping the VR suspension could handle me, not sitting all the way back. The two guys next to me take off their headsets, and I have a little exchange with them. I don't remember how me and the guy next to me got started, but his friend went back into the VR, and we should talk to the president. <laughs> no, I started ranting a bit and kind of got in my head and when I came out I realized the guys had long left and there were two young girls who had taken their spot. They were children and I felt like I had made a mistake as kids not my age didn't care but I was tainting their minds with my words against their parents will you know like like they didn't know I was getting political with their children. <laughs> Slightly ashamed, I stopped and the little girl next to me who wasn't sitting in the chair asked a question like, why do you even like this stuff? Or something like that. I'm not sure if I responded. If I did, I definitely don't remember what I said. The perfect recipe for a nightmare had been made. I was laying in bed, kind of freaking out, and yelled to my father. He yelled back, asking what, and said to keep it down because it's rude to be so loud. I figured Devin must be sleeping in her room. I imagined her room down the hall to the left even though I am in my room. I imagined her room was my room. I imagined we had two my rooms in the house and they were one was mine and one was Devin's. I got up and paced around, looking for my father to settle my nerves. I never found him, but I found Dolly, my dog, my little cute puggy. Um, I picked her up and I carried her around with me. I pet her and start to think about the terrible things that might happen to us, which is a no-no in nightmare scenarios. I looked to Dolly whose eyes had been turned off like a blender model. Just empty sockets. I stepped out through the front door. I remembered I remembered music always helped and smiled as I looked down and stepped into the gray void that was outside my house. I sang to Dolly the first thing that came to mind. Love is a burning thing. Cue trumpets. And it makes a fiery green. I had a perfect Johnny Cash voice in the dream. And the dream took an instant 180 and became beautiful and awesome. I didn't rem remember what happened next because I was so focused on making the music sound right. I kind of missed out on the other dream parts. So basically, when I started singing, it was like I spoke the Johnny Cash words and I had the Johnny Cash voice. But also, like, I was, like, mentally producing the trumpets. So I had to, like, focus on the trumpets as well. Like, I could mess up the trumpets with my thoughts. I was home and assigned some task from, like, my wife, but from another dimension. It was to look for some buried shirt. I, I dug in a weird ass square pixel pattern in the backyard, six feet deep, about. It was very large and I think I gave up eventually. I climbed up the side of our playhouse, which was replaced by an official metal heavy duty one. In real life, it's just wood. I felt like I went really high and I looked over to dad mowing Bob's property. That's our neighbor. The grass was maybe a tiny bit taller than six feet tall, which is, which is crazy high. I know this because I stood next to it later, later on in the dream. I waved the dad and he rides on over to me. I tr he tries yelling something at me. I didn't hear, so he turns the mower off and starts to open the gate. I go down to him and meet him at the gate before it's open. He says, too late, already opened it, break time. He then said, hole looks good, 
But I didn't find it, so it didn't matter. I'm pretty sure I was digging in the wrong spot or something. That was kind of lame. It was kind of a lame dream. Maybe I'll do one more. I don't know, the start was pretty cool, but the, the end wasn't that cool. Brant Gmod, that's a good one. This one's an old, old one. So I'm in a house with a crowbar, spamming this button that summons apples. Everything looks brown and bland, almost if there's a filter on it. I stop spamming the button and start spamming another one next to it. This one summons bread right next to it. When I spawn them, they appear above about two feet above the ground and fall into this dirty bucket. The flawed physics engine, praised for its time, made the bucket recoil with every slice. It, it has like Gmod physics. The title of the dream had Gmod in it, so I, didn't, I felt like I didn't need to imply the is in like the source engine. Just imagine terrible Gmod physics. The flawed physics engine, praised for its time, made the bucket recoil with every slice, like a little hop of excitement. I moved the room over, and this tiny gnome guy attacks me. He looks like a glowing boomer from Left 4 Dead with a gnome hat. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep calling them gnomes. I hit them with a crowbar, like a golf swing, and with a tink, he goes flying out and hits the wall. I opened the closet in the bedroom of the room that I just killed them. Why did I order? I opened the closet in the bedroom I'm in. Inside, there are weapons and armor galore. I was lost in the beauty of the weapons when this little gnome guy attacks my ankle. I start screaming like a girl for Brant. <laughs> and I run out of the closet through the room and for the front door. Before I can run out, Brant comes in and this miniature little gnome speeds out of the bedroom. Brant swings the crowbar overhead with both hands causing a splatter of gnome essence. I remember the gnome essence, it was like glowy green sludge. <laughs> <laughs> I take him to the closet and we gear up. There's a little gun packaged like a toy <laughs> that, I, that I was drawn to. It was a it was an SMG of some kind and had a nice dark wood finish. They had armor, but we didn't want to be slowed or too hot, so we didn't take any. We grabbed everything we could and left. Gosh, I struggled to read that dream. That's an old one. That's like fourth. That's literally... Wow, that's fourth from the bottom of my list. It's gonna be at the top now since I'm putting a little camera next to it so I know that I wrote it. All right, well, I'm gonna do a few more of these uh, throughout the week or whatever, and we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching, if you watched.